popular assembly. We're so, so happy to have you around here to turn up on Jamestown, located here in Chelsea Market. And we're here, we're from Sunset Park, Brooklyn. We got other folks from Brooklyn here. Yeah. We got folks from Queens out here. We got folks from the Bronx out here. We got some folks from Manhattan out here. Stand Island! Stand Island! We'll put this together in like a week, so. But yeah, so we're here, we're in, the, in Sunset Park, we're fighting the industry rezoning, and we know that we're not the only community that's fighting displacement and higher cost of living because of rezonings. So-called developers that are trying to extract as much wealth as they can out of the land and out of our housing. And so we invite all y'all here because we know our struggles are connected. And we're here for the Chelsea Market because the headquarters of Jamestown, one of the one of the principal owners of Industry City, is located here. Yeah. And we have some folks who have struggled here in this neighborhood of Chelsea and see the violence and displacement caused by Jamestown right here. And so we're going to open it up with them. We got some folks from Protect NYCHA and Fulton Houses here. So if y'all could come and say a few words about the violence and the displacement and the, the gentrification caused by Jamestown in this neighborhood, and then we'll and then we'll keep it moving. So, so shout out for them.
they were secret and what you saw is that the tenants were screaming that they didn't want any privatization, uh, they didn't want RAD, and then really but all the time that the elected officials there, the Legal Aid Society, Community Service Society, a lot of the nonprofits, they completely did not listen to the tenants. So I thought that was, for me to be there as a lay person to see what was going on in those meetings, it was really, really horrible. So, so anyways, what I think we should all do is I think this is amazing that the Sunset, Sunset Park Assembly has organized this, but we all really need to come together because our fights are the same. And I think if we're together, we can share resources, go to each other's events, and really organize together instead of organizing piecemeal. So that's something that I'd like to say. Um, and then the last thing I'd like to say is just, the one thing I've learned is don't go along with the process. Don't go along with their meetings, their timelines. Don't go along with it because as you go along, you'll get the same result. So when Fight for NYCHA, when we almost shut down one of the mayor's working groups, we handed out our own materials during developer-led meetings. Um, we did all of these things that you're not supposed to do, and it's really, really uncomfortable, but yes. I think everybody, you have to put yourself into that uncomfortable place, because if you do, you set the agenda. And I think that's what we all need to do. We yeah. all need to set the agenda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 privatize our building and I know that once that happens we're gonna all get kicked out once that becomes a section eight. We're back on the working group which I doesn't make no sense to me because right now we're going through a pandemic and people are already in situations of losing their apartments. So I do not see why they want to privatize. They should keep housing public because it's affordable for everyone. Once we become privatized the landlord could just kick us out for any kind of reason. So I need your support in the future when we start protesting again against de Blasio and Corey Johnson. Yeah. And we're not giving up housing. I'm going to fight till the end. And I'm yes, hoping right. that everybody will join yeah. us. Because this is all black and Latino right here. Yes, 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 and yes. they're trying to get us out of here. And yes. I refuse to leave. I refuse. I've been living there 20 years. And I would love to leave it to my children because they can't even afford rent right now, how high the rent is. And I don't want them moving away. I want them to stay here in New York where they could afford to pay the rent as well. Thank you guys and I hope we, we become successful at this. I just wanted to say also one more thing that I think is really powerful. Um, we were basically saying that if an elected official supports a racist rezoning that disproportionately affects people of color, that that elected official is racist. Right. So that's actually a really important narrative that I think everybody should start using. Is you, Any need to add, you need to call the elected yeah, official yeah. racist. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, just again, just to reiterate, just in those, those working groups, none of the elected officials, all of them say that, that they pretend that they want to take care of the tenants. And it's just further from the truth. And honestly, I wouldn't have believed it with my own eyes if I, I wasn't there seeing it. It was so horrific. And it's really done to like, you know, like poor working people of color. So just remember that narrative. It's very powerful. So one, one more thing, when we talk about racist rezoning, we're not talking about some rezonings are racist and other rezonings are not racist. All rezonings are racist. The purpose of rezoning always is to raise property value. And that will always displace, in a capitalist system, that will always displace poor and working people, people of color, indigenous people, and migrants. So we say all rezonings are racist. That's right! And that's why we say processes. Processes like Euler, that dispossessed communities of decision making power over their own neighborhood, need to be abolished. Literally, I'm in every protest every March, and I'm one of the ones that was at City Hall Park 
literally, I'm in every one, and I'm one of the ones that they tried to hit. So I know we have a lot of groups here, and we want to hear about all y'all's struggles and how we can link up. Oh, we're going to have an open mic at the destination we're going to. Um, we're here starting at Jamestown because we saw a link between what's going down in Sunset Park yes, and, and what's happened in here, here in Chelsea. In, in Chelsea. But as some of y'all know, the community in Sunset Park has been fighting and fighting yes. for years. Yes. To get our council member to say no to this. America, do y'all hear what's happening yeah, in New York City? Say no. Chelsea, Finally, he said hearing. no, but we need help. These the politicians need help, whose, whose pockets are lined by corporations and developers and landlords are trying to push this through anyway, right? And so we know right now the ball is in whose court? Our court. Our court. Corey Johnson. So we're going to pay him a visit. Let's do that, guys. Yeah.
Give him right here. Right here, right here. Right here, right here. Hey y'all, I'm originally born in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. And I am the exact product of what happens when you are gentrified out of your neighborhood. I was at 15 years old, found my, my family and I found ourselves homeless because our landlord wanted to raise our rent. And I was forced to move to a homeless shelter in East New York.
Yo soy de Colombia, llevo 15 años en el journey, en el journey. Mírenme, hasta se me hace difícil a mí. Llevo 15 años buscando un hogar y hasta este año lo encontré. Uh, I have been here 15 years and it took me 15 years to finally find a stable place to live. Fui desplazada de mi propio país por la violencia y la, y la violencia no solo desplaza de países pero también internamente. I was displaced by violence in my country and not only uh, physical violence but the violence of the other state. And also viol uh, migrational violence happens internally too. Estoy acá en solidaridad con todos los residentes de Sunset Park que me recibieron como una familia hace un año y por los cuales el día de hoy todavía estoy acá lista para luchar. I stand solidarity with the residents of Sunset Park who welcomed me like family after a year ago and he's who I'm fighting for today. Y sabemos que esta es solo una lucha de todas las luchas que tenemos que seguir adelante con. This is just one fight of many fights that we all have to unite ourselves together with. That's right. Entonces tenemos que usar cada día, cada momento, cada oportunidad para crecer la resistencia a la, a la, a la violencia sistemática que está afectando a nuestras familias por muchas, muchas generaciones y que nos está utilizando para afectar las vidas de otras familias también. So we have to show up every single time, every single place to resist the systemic violence which is affecting so many communities uh, in this city. Entonces, se vive y se siente, el pueblo está presente, no solo hoy, pero por siempre. to try to change his mind mm -hmm. for did. years. And after you did, what happened? Now, our friend that spoke in front of uh, Chelsea Market, he didn't want to name names, but I've never been afraid of a politician in my life, and I'm going to name names. Yeah, they were for you. So after Menchaca agreed with the community finally, we have some slimy council members who came out and opposed this decision. Call them up. Richie, Richie, Tricky Torres. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty Donovan Richards. Yeah. And Robert, I'm too tall to relate to my community. Carnegie. <laughs> And how do they try to sell it to us? The same way they always do. Jobs. We need the jobs. We need the jobs. Right. Yeah. Right. Now everybody out here knows that's bullshit. Yeah. 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 
construction jobs are temporary. Yes. Displacement is forever. Yes. That's right. That's right. So the question isn't really to build or not to build. The question is, who should we be building for? Mm -hmm. yes. Should we be building for the rich who fled when COVID hit? No. 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 Who ran from their luxury condos to their second and third homes? No. no. Should we be building for the rich who have seen their profits increase by 20% during this pandemic? No! Or should we be building for the MTA workers, the cashiers, the home health care, the home health care professionals? <laughs> the folks that kept, that kept the blood and the heart of this city pumping during the crisis. That's who we should be building for. Essential yeah. workers. That's right. That's right. Now we know racist rezonings aren't just isolated in industry city. So I'm from Central Brooklyn, and to be specific, Crown Heights. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you about another dirty council member, Lori Combo. <laughs> Now this particular council member, who's a good friend of Corey Johnson, That's right. was selected by Bruce Ratner, a developer, Boo. and Hakeem Jeffries, Boo. to give away our community. Boo. And she hasn't let them down. Yeah, they sure did. She sold our public public Brooklyn Armory to private interest. Piece of shit! This led to skyrocketing evictions in the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. She has also rezoned an historically black thoroughfare, Franklin Avenue, to make way for luxury towers. Piece of shit! Fuck your bastards! And her ultimate goal is to pass what, if it ends up being built, would be the largest residential complex in Brooklyn at 960 Franklin Avenue. Ooh. Ooh. Now, if it gets built, these 40-story towers will throw shade over the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens and kill two of the greenhouses forever. Ooh. That ain't right. Bullshit. Robin, little kids, of the experience of growing up with a green space in a neighborhood, just like I did. Mm. Now, I don't know, and one last thing about Lori Combo. She never takes our opinion as a community into consideration when she passes these deals, just like most of these other council members. That's right. And I don't, need, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'll say it. Any rezoning without real community input is illegitimate, corrupt, and racist. Yes. Yes. Nothing for us without us is for us. That's right. Yes. Now, even though I don't live in these communities, I oppose the luxury tower at 1590 Gates Avenue in Bridgewood. Yes. I oppose the Two Bridges Tower in Lower Manhattan. Not for sale. I oppose the Sunnyside Yard project in Queens. Not for sale. I oppose the rezonings in Bushwick. Not Kingwood, for sale. Not for sale. Not for sale. And Industry City. Not, Not for sale. Why do I oppose these? Because your fight is my fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I will always oppose any rezoning in any people of color neighborhood does not have buy-in from the community. That's right. And here's the one last piece of advice that I give to every housing fighter out here today. Run. Run for city council next That's year. That's right. 
Get involved. Yes. Run, run, like the future of your kids depends on it, and the future of your neighborhood. Yeah. And if you don't want to run, find somebody else who will, and support them. That's right. Like the future of your kids depends on it. This is the last thing I'll say. In a lot of these communities, including mine, of color, first they redlined us in, right, in the 60s. They put us in these little boxes, and they extracted all economic power from us, right? And now, all of a sudden, they want to rezone us out. I say no. Hell no! Hell no! Are we going to let them rezone us out? Hell no! Are we going to let them rezone us out? Hell no! Thank you. Gentrification, colonialism, removal, barbarism, class warfare. Class warfare, that's my favorite. Um, thank you. So, uh, with that being said, we just want to uplift the fact that a rezoning, in in essence, is just colonialism again, right? We already know we're standing on on uh, stolen land, Nape Hoking, as someone said earlier. And what we're seeing here is just a, a rebranding of urban renewal. It's a rebranding of colonialism. It's a rebranding of 1492. We're basically in 1492 again, um, but, it, it's, but it's 2020, right? And, and what we're seeing is not only like the disease of capitalism, as that says over there, capitalism is disease, we're the cure. Um, we're seeing uh, uh, a complete lack of creativity for the same imperialist and colonial structures that have always oppressed us in the same ways, right? Thank you. So we, so we don't need to act like this is something new, because it's not. As long as we've had colonialism, we've had neo-colonizers, like Corey Johnson, for example, like uh, Robert Carnegie, like Combo, all of them, they're neo-colonizers, it's not new. They're put in place to ensure that the power structures that exist, that intentionally oppress and suppress working class, poor, black and brown folks, indigenous folks, poor and working poor and houseless trans folks, queer folks, folks that come here because they don't have any other option. And then we end up with people essentially wearing our struggle, right? Like an accessory. And there's a lot of that happening in the political moment right now. How many people who come to these things are actually gentrifiers and neo-colonizers themselves? Am I right? Yes. I'm not, I, I mean, we don't want to hear it, but no, it's true. No, tell the truth. So, um, so with that being said, like, what do those rearrangements of power dynamics mean? Which is why as Take Back the Bronx, we say fuck politicians. And we say, uh, not only do we say fuck rezonings, we say fuck politicians. Y'all don't believe in fuck politicians? No? Okay. I'm just, I'm like, am I talking to myself? Um, all right. Uh, because clearly their interest is to maintain their powers, to maintain their qualm. It's not for us. Unless it comes from us, as someone said earlier, it's not for us. Period. Anything else is a charade. And it's a charade that's, a, that's essentially dancing in our blood in these streets. So we have to start taking this shit a little more serious, right? Excuse me, there are children. Okay. Um, with that being said, uh, we, we had an attempted rezoning uptown. And what happened? People power quashed that shit. We killed it. And despite what 
what bullshit you hear that came from people, that came from working class people, that came from houses people, that came from poor people, being in community together. Because no one's going to do this for us. No one's going to save us. White saviorism has never saved us. It's just left us continuously poisoned, yeah. right? So what do those relationships look like that are healthy, that materially change our conditions as poor and working poor, black, brown, and indigenous people? This is not a theory thing. It is a practice only. If you're not here for the practice of liberation, go home. Do something else. Because this rezoning shit, it, it not only is it not new, but it's not something that can continue. Like the, the surveillance that's already ramping up in the few months of quarantine is going to show us a very different New York City when this place opens. And it's not going to be the, for the benefit of the people who are already screwed. That's right. Right? So if we don't start working together as neighbors and not depending on politicians, gentrifiers, or whoever else to be a representative of us, an unfortunate and unnecessary representative of our struggles, we will not be liberated. Is there a problem? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, so no one can do it for us. It is only by embodying our struggle that we can be liberated as the most oppressed people in this city. In particular, once again, working poor, poor, and houseless, formerly incarcerated, incarcerated community members. These are the people we need to have at the center of our conversation. If that is not the case, we will not succeed. And we can't afford to not Cancel rent! Cory Johnson, 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 c
Anybody want to say anything? 